I come. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. So first of all, thank you for to, to attend, and thank you, EGS, for inviting me, of course. And so I'm going to present um, yeah, parts of, of uh, recent work uh, just published. I'm afraid, but just this week, so it's not it's not uh, available yet. It's a DVD. And it's a result of long-term collaboration with a sculptor called Jacques Julien. We did many things, books and films, and even a radio play together over the years. And the DVD uh, uh, presents most of these works in the form of a long feature uh, narrative, kind of narrative film, uh, uh, portraying us, Jacques et Pierre, who are which are very banal names in French, as um, teenage adventurers in the tradition of Jules Verne's heroes. Uh, many references to the universe of Jules Verne's novels as well. Um, so since this is very recent, it, it hasn't been subtitled yet. I'm sure that for international, <coughs> it will. Actually, I'm sure it won't. But. So I had to translate little parts of it myself and take a translation that existed for another part of it. Now, this sculptor, Jacques Julien, with whom I worked, you will see some of his work in the films, and his sculptures are very often um, reminiscent of uh, forms of uh, sports fields and sports equipments. And so what I will do is read the translated text, um, or part of it in the uh, for the, the third little piece, there are three little pieces, and then run the film so that you can at least remember some of the, the text while you watch it if you don't understand French. <coughs> so the first one, I have to go to the menu. It's called Personal Pong. And the film itself was uh, filmed by myself, and um, so, so with the reading, as you'll hear, but there's an original music by a um, French musician called Sarah Murcia, and there's also an actress who plays ping pong, who's uh, French actress Jeanne Balibar. And what I will read first is a translation made by an Irish poet called, um, named Kevin Nolan, and I'd just like to, to, to indicate that many of the puns, and especially sexual puns in the translations, are really his. <laughs> well, you'll see afterwards. You'll compare. Between us floats a ghostly robe, flower of the fatal shoot, your winning shot inside this little scene, is a thought that wavers in the stream while its flash stays pristine, virgin as the French in the portrait of a lady, couldn't be archer. No, my aim is a bell called Pansy, meaning thought, though her real name's Lizzie. Thought is a flower, you are the flower of my thought, une vraie jeune fille. Inside this scene, we could be playing table tennis, you in your floral gown, me drenched in sweat, now dryly pondering some model ploy or disputing, and returning every shot, I grant you can't lose alone, so bleakly by tiny degrees. Who wins loses sometimes, I'm dumb with crazy deafened laughter, you try it, while speaking and sucking in air, I choke at the thought, my interlocutor oxygen ricochets as we talk and breathe the same ear, the same words, worth a few quick puffs of Ventoline as you calm down. I need you to think of me battling alone. Hear me acting out the impossible, literally, I mean groundlessly, 
consider the swing of my right back hand soundlessly sliced through the arc Anna of ping pong, the inner game, Korea, no date. Read my tense lips, how tabular. We play like prisoners drawing barcodes of deleted days who duplicate their cell by date. Now I palpitate with sweat from head to foot, a pneumatic drill, sorrowful shadow boxing, pseudo semaphore routines. Not a handicap I'd recommend for you. What we need is some childlike code, short on rules, like love, so we can discuss action at a distance. We could be angels, imagine a land of level peace, even total op uproar, crystal in living color, in point cast stereo, floodlit yellow, a riot of tiny cameras triggered whenever a tactile screen is brushed in virtual discorporation incarnate where the game isn't lost in the spectacle, where nothing anymore is half so real. To consummate the carnage in my room, you munch an apple quietly, drown biscuits in your tea. Then, as Casanova once said, with the discussion over, you ask, was I finished? My host, your concern would be hilarious if only you'd asked in the meantime, quite when I don't recall. Ah, yes, parked in a sentimental colloquy last summer on the neatly tidied bed. I don't aim for you, direct, but faint with second guesswork, faint with doubled feeling, feign arrogance and fake indifference. Blank it all out, then nothing but to leave defeated, pencil up some factive space, retrace what makes us come together. Convention, maybe, the vision of a medium so clear, light shoots like an arrow flies. For me, to darken, muddy stain with flecks of effort now, a risky ploy I put together, fucked up over you. Been down over you, I risk trailing out the action once again. Here are the trials of my attempt. I stain, muddle, darken the loosened space where arrows shoot and light flies unerring through a mirage, a convention where we come together, suave, imp a hypersurface. I work up with my pencil or down in blunt defeat. Nothing's right on this blank screen. I fake emotion, feign arrogance, a third or second time around, but never first time do I score with you. On the neat bed last summer, recoiling in the frozen aftermath, how it was, I don't recall what happened while we were just gaming in my room with hotel chit-chat. Was that it, etc.? Amusing enough, had you asked after the debate, as Casanova called it, quietly dipped biscuits in your tea or nibbled an apple before your final siege? began the body count. Nothing more real, though, is picked up or plays out through the closed circuit that fuses our technical bodies. Living through virtual screens, we graze to turn on tiny cameras, yellow searchlights flooding the ground in stereo transmission, total face shift from the usual user-friendly fire that we become like angels trading childish love from distant prospects short on rules, in need of a rule. What I offer, isn't it some drama drone drilled from a rock or hard place, hard work, face work, or total face off, like the calendars placed mockingly by prisoners, by their own cell bars, or games of t table tennis, phrased, read my lips in the silent depth of Korean handbooks, analyzing my backhand sweep through the arm's groundless movement, it is truly utopian. Listen to me pitching alone. Imagine it. I insist. <laughs>